Hi, I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and put out a shit ton more candles for whenever the men take to the ice. Hello, welcome back to our second Skate Canada episode. It's going to be chaotic. And of course, that means we're talking about men who else? and ice dance, which is less chaotic, but because they're with men in this episode, the chaos level is just like through the roof. So we are going to hop straight into it. We're a little tight on time because San Francisco and Sydney are not time zone friends. They are not friends. No. We are jet lagged just like the German pair was because exactly. they missed their connection and the pair is bad. But in a week's time, we're going to be on opposite daylight saving schedules, which means it's going to be nicer for us. So I'm keen for that. All right. Let's hop straight into Ice Dance. I watched the CBC stream with Ted Barton and all of the Canadian skaters and that was really great commentary. Caitlin Weaver provided like some really good insights. She I love to um see Caitlin and hear Caitlin again in the skating world because she is lovely. She also stuck with the new terminology um such as saying S step um, and sea steps instead of chalk doors and mohawks, which I was very glad for. Thanks, Caitlin. You're awesome. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, let's get straight into the pair who came in 10th, and that was Haley Sales and Nicholas Wamsteeker, 24 and 25 years old. Coached by Scott Moyer. Coached by Scott Moyer, yes. They recently switched to Scott in June of this year. And happy late birthday, Nicholas. You turned 25 on the 20th of October. So happy birthday. And you know what? I actually really enjoyed them. I think they obviously aren't up um, in terms of caliber with the rest of the field, but they have, they've got a lot of promise. They're young. I think they're in really good hands with Scott and I didn't mind watching them at all. Yes, as we said last time, keep it young, as they did, because they skated to Billie Eilish and Dua Lipa. <laughs> I've never, have we ever seen a Dua Lipa program? No. Whatever, I'm here for it. More Dua Lipa programs. I'm here for it too. The new album is like hot fire. So the more we can get of Dua Lipa programs, the more I'm here for it. Ted did say Billie Eilish. And I was like, okay, Ted. Oh, this is where he said Billy Eilish. Yeah. I thought he said it in Aliona's program in, in women's, but here but here it was. Oh, yeah. Probably Simon oh. also said Billy Eilish, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, it is Billy season. She's having a great season. It's also Billy Green season. Um, Philip Glass is passing that baton on to Billy Eilish. Haley looked beautiful. So did Nick. They're Key points, they only got one. It was a no, 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 yes. But I was like, they're not bad. I feel like they they still skate quite young and juniorish. But like I said, I hope they're in great hands with Scott. And apparently, according to Caitlin Weaver, the amount of improvement they have made in just a short few months um, after their coaching switch has been like marked. So if they can keep that rate of improvement going, I think Scott... Uh, Canadian dance is in really good hands for the next quad. I agree. And uh, I just want to talk about Dua Lipa. So I'm scared to be lonely by Dua Lipa for the free dance. Very, again, very on trend with the silk slip that Haley is wearing. Fantastic. I find a lot of those thrifting. So yeah. And that that's a good thing, by the way. Yeah, it is a good thing. It's, it's a very good thing. Uh, the twizzles were fantastic. Level four twizzles. Um, and I think, like you said, lots of improvement, lots of promise. Love to see it. And again, Dua Lipa. Do a leaper. Haley is really good at, at expressing emotion through her face, which is great to see. I think also they have done really well in their music um, cuts and transitions. So especially in the Dua Lipa free skate, I love how they added in the remix at the end um, to keep the energy up. So I think that was really smart. It's the same song, but the remix and it's keeping it, keeping it young. Well done to them. Looking forward to seeing them in the upcoming seasons for sure. And in ninth place, we have from Russia, Elizaveta Shaneva and David Norizhny. 
Oh my gosh, absolute chaos. This is, okay. Such chaos. This is where we start our complaints about the rhythm dance music. Oh my, it's just yes, a exactly. true circus this season. This is especially chaotic. There's just so much happening and I don't love it. First and foremost, like, you see the costumes and my immediate reaction is, oh, I don't hate it. And then I was like, oh wait, I forgot. He has the bloody writing on the front of his shirt. Like, that literally looks like his wit... He's written it in like liquid paper whiteout saying the legend is born. And I was like, I forgot that this happens. This is like, this is the shirts that the men wear in their Bumble profiles where the first one is of them holding a fish. No. no, no. <laughs> and then you scroll to maybe the third one or the fourth one and they're definitely wearing some variant of a shirt that says the legend is born. Oh, 100%. Maybe not in like whiteout. Or it's in their bio with an American flag. Oh, 100%. Maybe not in like whiteout, but like, you know. COVID times are rough. There's supply chain issues. You have to do what you have to <laughs> Just do. <laughs> tip over to Office Depot. But yes, this. Okay, so there's like zero consistent theme in the music choice in the entire program. They start off skating to Capin by Philo Machado, then go into Legendary by Welshley Arms, then go into the mashup Pentatonics, which I don't mind. I do like Pentatonics. Pentatonics. I don't mind. Love Pentatonics. But they go the Hey Mama and Hit the Road Jack. And there is nothing in common between these three songs. Their costumes scream fun and keeping it young, like keeping it TikTok young. But like also, like I'm a bit bored. It falls a little flat. Or cause I, maybe it falls flat because I have zero clue what's going on. But Caitlin Weaver did... This is why I like the CDC stream, even though they're like 30 seconds behind everyone else. But Caitlin Weaver said, um, and this is almost verbatim, but she said, the skaters have to be careful with, you know, the hip hop theme this season for their choreography not to be stereotyped. And with this team, it was a bit on the borderline for me, especially with the arm movements. And I'm like... I agree completely. Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm so glad that Caitlin is actually commenting on these things and not just kind of like letting them slide, which I, again, very much appreciate. Um, in their free dance, they skated to Amaluna from Cirque du Soleil. I'm not the biggest fan of Cirque du Soleil programs, just in general. Um, however, not just not my favorite program. They did have this really weird fall. After the combo spin, it was just really random. I was like, oh, you fell. And then they just kind of came busting out in the last maybe half of it with the very the up-tempo. Rock. Yes, electro rock. Just a lot of chaos. I don't think they know maybe what's happening with their packaging. Again, some questionable stereotyped movement in the rhythm dance. I'm just not, not a big fan. I think there need to be some changes here. Yeah, like Lee's is dressed in head-to-toe black mesh. Um, like the only great thing for me with the Twizzles, they were really nice and fast to a great piece of music. But for me, that was about it. Like music was going a bit dead in the middle. Then this really electro rock thing bit happened in the final third. I was very confused. But like you said, a Cirque, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of Cirque du Soleil programs, mainly because they're they're abstract and hard to I guess um, portray and interpret. I think that. Um, Genia Medvedeva's Allegria was probably the closest thing to enjoyment of a Cirque du Soleil program that I've had because it was very specific. <laughs> I don't um, like Allegria either. <laughs> I don't like the name Allegria, but I think the way, like, her, the choreography and the package that she had was acceptable. But, yeah, they just don't hit. Um, another thing that didn't really hit for me was Christina Carrera and Anthony Ponomarenko's Bat Dance by Prince. Oh, I'm not sure. And I usually I'm, enjoy these two. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, it's a lot of head to toe black with like gray lines. Which is not a great aesthetic for them. No. I don't know. And everything seemed a little bit off. Their edges seemed a little bit off. Um, their transition seemed a little bit off. They lost a lot of levels, just little messy things that really added up to, again, it was very evident to their placing that they, they did place eighth. Um, I think there needs to be a lot of work done. Yes, definitely. They are coached by Scott Moyer and Patrice Luzon, splitting time between the IM campuses. Um, and yeah, so I think their free dance was a little better. It was to week a game by Chris Isaac. I agree. And no head to toe black with gray lines. No. There. Christina was in a lovely royal blue number. And I was like, this is much better. Um, it was just a bit, eh. 
I, I think I was tuning out a little bit after the one footstep sequence. And then as soon as I was just like, uh, okay, they just like started taking us to the club. And I was like, oh, um, good timing, <laughs> I guess. I appreciate any trip to the club. Yeah, truth. Um, but then, so I've got this question and this is probably because I haven't had the time to properly research. And I don't think it's the case, but do the teams have to keep the hip hop rhythm slash theme for their free dance too? No. Like, I really don't think they have to. I'm pretty sure. But like, what's up with uh, so many teams deciding to do their choreographic um, character step, like very much in line with the rhythm dance theme? And I was like, this isn't my favorite kind of performances from them I or agree. package. I agree. Um. However, a, a, a team that I am a big fan of, usually a fan of their packaging, actually enjoyed it more last season, is Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson from Great Britain. Look, they know who they are. They have their brand. They are unique. And that uniqueness is like 60s to 80s programs with 60s to 80s costumes, which is great. Love the vibe. Um, but not their greatest competition here. So for their rhythm dance, uh, they skated to I Was Made For Loving You, Forever and Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss. Uh, interesting choices of music, but like, I quite like it. The first set of the Twizzles though, like Lila had a shit show with the Twizzles <laughs> on this competition. Oh no, it was not good. There was almost like a full on collision. In the rhythm dance, she lost it in the second set of Twizzles and almost crashed into Lewis. Uh, managed to recover from this thir- for this third set. Same thing almost happened in um, their free dance as well. Um, otherwise, key points, no, yes, no, yes. They definitely lost some levels on their midline step and on their pattern step. Yeah. I vibe the costumes, though. I think it's a fun program from them, like usual. A lot of like little things to, to clean up. But, you know, I think their time machine slash Dalek is comfortably in the 60s to 80s and they're comfortable sticking in that um, in that time space continuum. <laughs> that didn't make sense, but whatever. Um, Lion King. For their free dance. Yeah, their Lion King free what do you dance. Think? I, you know, after Wakaba's Lion King, I just think that other Lion King programs fall a little bit short. This had um, rules in it. I though. honestly found this had like. The f- <laughs> I found the first half honestly a little boring, which is weird because I'm like such a big Lion King fan. But like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know what's going on here with the first half because I love them. I love Lila, Lila and Lewis, and I also love the Lion King. That is so much. <laughs> I need to. My tongue is just twisting, having, <laughs> having a workout. Twist. Um, it was a cool, a full time really twister. cool opening. Um, curve lift, and the twizzles on. <laughs> Uh, not the syn- not the synchronized twizzles, but like a twizzle section of, um, I think that it was their one foot step. No, it was their circular step. And it happened on like, it's the circle of life. And I'm like, <laughs> Stop. that's actually kind of funny. So much <laughs> um, and then, so Lila dropped levels in the twizzles yet again. One foot steps were level twos for both Lila and Lewis. But then for the dance break, so the like, choreographic character step a remix happened and we went into some more hip-hop dance and I was like everyone is just continuing to do hip-hop dance and you know the hip-hop dance and the rhythm dance is not necessarily exemplary either so it's like just switch it up folks just switch yeah it up. just yeah like so Caitlin Weaver said what I love about this team is that they're not afraid to make brave choices which is very true, like at least they're unique and you know that that's like, you know their brand. But a lot of the time I find that there's not too much difference between their rhythm dance and their free dance. It's true. They are a little, a little one note. Um, There were also just some little errors. For example, Lewis kind of messed up the slide move. Lila had issues with the twizzles again. Again, just little things. And also we don't need to carry on the hip hop in the free dance, especially when it's already a little bit questionable for the rhythm dance. But I mean, everything was reflected in their scores. They only scored 106.19 in the free dance. We know they can do a lot better for an overall score. I know for an overall score of 178.08. But you know, I don't think their Olympic spot is at question at all. So they've got 
they've got a lot of time to to really peak for their nationals and the Olympics. So hopefully we see that. It's, it is still relatively early in the season, so they've got time. One team, though, that I really hope gets uh, gets a Canadian dance spot. Oh, I love them so I much. I love them. Coming in at... Coming in in sixth place is Marjorie Lajoie and Zachary Lagar. I love them so much. I'm such a fan of them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I do have a bone to pick, though, with them. Oh, okay. The masks for the free dance and the kiss and cry, absolutely yes. phenomenal. He had a whole yes. beak going on. <laughs> a full If you beak. have zero context, you will be going like, what? Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Okay, so they skate to Rio, <laughs> like from the, like, yes. the bird movie, the DreamWorks I think it's DreamWorks bird movie for their free dance. And he, they basically have like bird like costumes. And he had a mask that was a beak. I was like, I love it. I love this. But in their rhythm dance, he his mask doesn't match. No. Where's your energy, and Zachary? It, it was just like a plain blue mask that you get because uh, you forgot your mask at home and they have to hand it out. And Marjorie, like, so she's upset. got her, like, matching masks all sorted out. And I feel like Zach had to, was just like, oh, I need to pick up my game. So, like, give me a full beak mask. So like a full upset. beak. I don't even think it's a mask. It's just, like, it's Halloween. Just beak. It's just a part hi, of his I... anatomy. Yeah. Gets to the cash out and she's like, hi, I'm, I want to buy this beak. <laughs> But their rhythm dance is to Funky Town by Lips Inc. So I love it. Then they go into Super Solid Soul and Far From Over. I They perform to the rafters every single time. The opening with Funky Town is just so great. It's so great. <laughs> yes, it is very good. Um it's yeah it's phenomenal honestly like do we even watch for the key points do the judges even watch who knows i mean we do but um they did lose some levels again on their midline step and on their pattern step we feel like that is a very common theme especially in kind of like this middle and the bottom third here but again very much enjoyable very they never fail to put a smile on your face um I don't hate the music cuts, like they kind of work, but maybe that's just because I like them and they make it work. But also like not actually the worst compared to some others. Yeah, very, very true. Um, But what really stands out and stood out last season as well is this free dance to the Rio soundtrack where they they take the interpretation of it very literally. And if you didn't know what they were going to put out, you might be thinking, really? Like skating to Rio and you're doing like literal bird stuff. That sounds weird, but like birds. And then they come out and deliver this and you're like, holy shit, this needs to be at the Olympics. Like this needs to be at the Olympics. It is so good. If this doesn't go to the Olympics, we riot. It, well, absolutely. It's just so good. Their packaging is amazing. Like, considering the free dances that we saw before this, I just think that their packaging is just, like, next level. They really commit. There's no kind of, like, wishy-washy stuff. They're like, we are birds. <laughs> We're here. The program really is a complete package. It's legit a full performance experience. And, like, unfortunately, stuff like that is so rare these days. Like, I don't care that they're skating to an animated bird movie soundtrack. I mean, the music is, like, legit dope, so, like, fair game. But give me a story. Give me a performance. Give me the elements that go with the story. And, give like, the elements are actually difficult. And make it an experience and a moment. Like, that's the unique... That's the uniqueness of skating. It's both a sport and an art. I think Marjorie and Zach capture that exact essence with this free dance. That opening first minute is so special. It is something. Yeah, it is really, really amazing. It's something else. Um, Okay, before we just spend the whole podcast waxing lyrical about Marjorie and Zach, let's move on to maybe a different energy that we have here with our... (laughs) With our uh, fifth place finishers, Diana Davis and Gleb Smolkin, who, (laughs) these music choices. First of all, for the rhythm dance, we have yet another Boom Boom Pow by the Black Eyed Peas. And then we also have Bomb Diddy Bomb by Nick Jonas and Nicki Minaj. But then, 
which is very much contrasting, which I do appreciate. But then there's Moulin Rouge for the free dance, and it's just so Tessa and Scott, and Scott Moyer is, like, right there, and I'm like, I don't know if I like any of <laughs> It's... So, I mean, okay, let's just... I guess let's start with Moulin Rouge, because, like... Let's start, okay, skating, let's start with Moulin Rouge. They're skating Moulin Rouge in Canada with Scott Moyer literally in the kiss and cry because Christina and Anthony skated like right before Deanna and Gleb. <laughs> so awkward. And I mean, yes, they did well, like with the music cut being different. Oh my God. I almost, I also forgot another awkward point is that their coach is Eagle Spielband, who is Tessa and Scott's former coach before they did Moulin Rouge. And so that's awkward. And even though like, Um, Igor is like really really good with tangos like it just that whole relationship is awkward but like the music card is a little different and I'm glad that they go with that because it'd be really awkward if it was like a lot of the same um but they didn't do bad at all okay but let's let's cycle back to the um boom boom pow and bomb bitty bomb the uh the middle age wedding dance theme music oh my gosh okay well (laughs) they are improving yeah they are I do think they're improving they also hit three of their key points which is great because I feel like at Skate America we saw maybe less key points hit than most look (laughs) which is very unfortunate lost a couple of levels in their pattern step um I think just like there needs to be little things here and there that need to be edited, but I actually prefer this Boom Boom Pow program over the last one that we saw again at Skate America. Yeah, I agree. Look, this pairing has so much political power, it's ridiculous. Obviously, Deanna is a Terry's daughter, and Gleb, his father, is a really famous Russian actor. So like they've they've got all they've got their hands everywhere. Like they can the Federation can be pushing them to the absolute top. But the thing is, they do get better at every competition. Like like with Alyssa Liu, they, do. They, they, do. they know that, you know, they know their parents, obviously, and they know that they have to back themselves up. And it's really nice to see that they are improving every single time they come out. Does that mean they should be getting the, a Grand Prix spot over other Russian teams that have been out there for longer and uh, you know, technically better. Not really. They do have the balls to skate Moulin Rouge in front of Scott Boyer. That's true. <laughs> if you have the that balls to do that, you truly have the balls to do anything. Yeah, I mean, Eagle has done a very good um, job with them. I mean, look where they placed. You know, they can definitely hold their own. I do think where they made up a lot of their marks was, like you said, they hit three out of the four key points, which not a lot of teams did. And so I think they're clearly working on making sure that they have all the technical base first, which, you know, comes at the cost of a little style and speed to do so. But hey, whatever works for them. And I think it's probably a good strategy to stick with getting all the technical stuff right. And then because they're young, they have the time um, to to build on the PCS later. So, I mean, good strategy from them. Gleb was lip syncing everything. I mean, boom, boom, pow. Yes, he was. Go for it, Gleb. Um, but yeah, Caitlin Weaver said that she worked with Deanna and Gleb and she said that they seemed to have skated their RD quite conservative compared to what they do in practice. So, I mean, that means they've still got um, some energy in their tank that we haven't seen. So that's exciting. I mean, it is their first Grand Prix, so maybe some nerves. But let's talk about Moulin Rouge because they leapfrogged quite, uh, quite a lot of teams. Yes, they definitely did. They scored 109.91 for a total of 180.57, which is a Big old total, again, for the first Grand Prix. Yeah. Um, I think that, especially with Moulin Rouge, but I just feel like they skated, and maybe this is the issue that Caitlin was talking about, that they skated a little bit conservatively. Maybe it's because their first Grand Prix, whatever it may be. Um, but I do think that they were just a little bit like sloppy with transitions and entries and exits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's not like, it's not like bad. I just think that everything could be like just tightened yeah. up a little bit. I agree. I think they... They perform really well, but for them, if that mean if that makes sense, like they don't uh, project that performance into the back row, uh, which I mean, unlike a, Rio, unlike Rio, exactly, 
which they need beak masks. <laughs> Imagine beak masks. Hypothetical from beak masks. The the symbolism of the beak mask. <laughs> Full like, commitment. Yeah, the commitment. That opening stationary lift to the rotational lift is incredible. Um, it tells the story with the music. Um, it's really really strong. They their technical stuff isn't really bad at all. Um, I think that they need to improve on carrying the speed that they start. Um, certain like patterns and step sequences with they need to carry it throughout the whole thing I feel like they slowed down quite a lot um, during it so they've got a lot of things to work on obviously but they're probably one of the only teams to have not gotten like level ones and level twos only for their one foot step Diana got a level three for hers and Gleb got a level two and so just little differences in the technical score really help leapfrog them above other teams who are better skaters but didn't hit the technical technical mark quite as well but you know I wasn't bored throughout the program they kept you know me engaged as much as they could and that's not easy so I mean well done to them and yeah I mean look they came in fifth overall and there wasn't too much like egregious scoring with them so I mean holding their own well done I agree another team that very much held their own and I enjoy them a lot because I feel like their programs this season are a little bit less sexualized which I very much appreciate because she is 18 and he is 26 and at last season she was 17 anyways this is Caroline Green and Michael Parsons from the U.S. Um, so for their rhythm dance, they do a Janet Jackson medley. And we talked about this in the Skate America episode as well. I actually prefer this to Hubble and Donahue's Janet Jackson. And I know that a lot of people have opinions about that, but I really do prefer this. I do too. I think it's the perfect example of how to do a Janet Jackson medley. I truly love this rhythm dance. It's packaged really, really well. Costumes are solid um, too. Choreo is great, fits the theme, but it's also not over the top. I think they do this really, really well. It's not problematic. They keep it like very tasteful, and it's the same with their um, with their free dance as well. It's subtle. Oh, the free dance is so good. I love it. I mean, okay. Also, fun fact: both Caroline and Michael are born on the third of October. They have the same birthday. That's fun. <gasps> Your birthday's October eleventh. Sorry, that's a Parent Trap reference. In case no one noticed. <laughs> I, I was just like, wait, what? Oh, no, I got it. Violin Concerta number one and Clouds the Mind on the Rewind by Ezio Bosso for their free dance. And this is art. It, it's, it's art. It's stunning. It's so good. It didn't put me to sleep. It, it's such a great, like, modern contemporary piece. Like, this is what it looks like, y'all. Beautiful choreography, beautiful delivery from both Caroline and Michael. It's mesmerizing. It, they're so light and airy on the ice. It's unique. I really, really like this. I don't like the dress for Caroline. I feel like... Oh, the, the dress is a little unfortunate. The pink the pink tie-dye can stop at the waist, and I'd be happy with it. It's a little bit like body conjunctivitis. I'm just not really... Fit. Oh, my God. <laughs> we talked about conjunctivitis in our yeah. last, in episode. last episode. Just FYI. Oh, that choreo character step sequence was stunning. It's so oh, I just so love good. they need this needs to be both of these programs need to be at the Olympics. Yes, thank goodness. But like the thing is that it comes at the cost of other of our favorites and like I have issues with that. I don't want that like, either. I don't want that either, but like also I need this at the Olympics. I agree. Otherwise otherwise they get sent to the world championships and win. That's it. <laughs> I agree. End game, all over. But Olivia Smart and Adrian Diaz coming in third in the competition with their compatriots for the Olympic spot, these programs also need to be at the Olympics. I think they are both incredible vehicles and they're so good. I agree. I, again, like we said in the Skate America episode, I love the Tina Turner. I think this is one of my favorite rhythm dances this season, mostly because it's like not a bunch of music cuts and no boom boom. One pass. song. <laughs> and it's just very intelligent. It's such a good yeah. song for the rhythm dance for the Midnight Blues. It's great for the hip hop portion too. I love it. 
uh, yeah, like you said, so, so, so smart. Such smart music and choreo, for the, the whole theme. Olivia should also petition to be on Lip Sync Battle because she was lip syncing literally every second through the program. <laughs> I mean, it... TBH. There was a lot of lip syncing. I think yeah. the Boom Boom Pow people were lip syncing too. Yeah. To be honest, like, it's so hard not to <laughs> sing along to Proud Mary. Um, but, I mean, she was also lip syncing in The Mask of Zorro. And I'm like, girl, I'm, I, I get <laughs> it's it. Just Zorro. But also. So they scored 76.97 for the rhythm dance. Nothing lower than a plus two in their whole sheet, which is really great. A lot of um, twos, threes, and fours. This Mask of Zorro free dance, though, I, I really love it. I think it's so good. It's so smart. The sword fighting. I love it. It's so It delivers that punch. Yeah, it's very, very good. A lot of people were not a fan of the sword fighting. I was like, again, where is the taste? Your wrong opinion <laughs> is showing. Yes. We covered their programs in Skate America as well, and they just delivered yet again here. So we're going to move on to our second place finishers, who are Charlene Guignard and Marco Fabri. Yes. So they did a uh, Michael Jackson medley for their rhythm dance, which I actually quite enjoyed. I was a little bit wary of, I, I'm, I'm always wary of a medley, um, but I actually think this, again, was a very smart choice. And um, in these top teams here, I think that that smart choice of their music really, really helped. Um, these two are very, very seasoned skaters as well. So I think that, again, also helped. But big, big sigh of relief on, on the Michael Jackson here. Clever music transition into the Midnight Blue section. That straight line lift, that is such a creative entrance. They missed their celebratory high five at the end, which I was just like, guys, Go back and redo it, please. Everything else was great. So like, I know, I saw that. I was like, oh no. Uh, I, I still think this could be improved on. I feel like they weren't skating as fast as we've seen them before. However, you know, we love their mom and dad dancing at your wedding energy. Like, actually legit. I'm, I'm not saying that as a slight. I, I, I vibe with it. I'm also so happy that they kept their Atonement free dance from last season. I do love the Atonement soundtrack. Yeah. It's a very good one. They're so light on the ice, so seasoned, great, lovely, deep edges, just mature and refined. It And it shows so clearly. Storytelling was subtle but gorgeous. And I think they lost a few levels here and there, but, you know, who cares? Their quality shone through 121.23 for their free dance for 200.05 in total, landing them solidly in second place. Love it. Um... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Piper and Paul are gold medalists here. First of all, I'm really glad that they got the gold at Skate Canada. I'm, I'm just a fan of this. Yes. And also, maybe a bold prediction, I hope that they are on the podium at the Olympics because I think that they are really peaking at the right time. You know what? It is entirely probable. And the way they have come out this season, the programs that they have, they, they're gunning for it. They are putting everything into this Olympic season and it wouldn't be a surprise if they end up on that podium. I mean, I think the only disappointing thing if they were on the podium would be that it would be their free dance costumes and not this loud and bold orange number <laughs> that they've got going on <laughs> for the rhythm dance. You know what? I do love a loud and bold costume for Elton John, Nathan. <laughs> wow. I love it. Like, they've got, like, rainbow it. tufts on there. It, it's... <laughs> It's something. It's so good. It's a bus seat done right. <laughs> That's a fun bus seat, let me tell this you. It's a fun. This is a party bus. Well, they did bring the party for that rhythm dance. Really excellent and clean through the twizzles, level four for both. They're the only couple that got full key points, all yeses. And no wonder because that was a really good Midnight Blues. Really, really good. Um, majority plus threes and plus fours in GOE for their entire sheet. Uh, averaging like around 9.5 across PCS. They've worked really hard on improving all those like little bits of their skating. And it has severely paid off. Really great program for them. Really good. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. They're coming for that Olympic podium. They are truly peaking at the right time. And imagine these costumes on the podium. Like, I think they deserve it. They should change. For the costumes for... alone. Yeah, exactly. They should change back into the rhythm dance costumes mm -hmm. for the podium. I would do it. <laughs> um, 
but they have walked a long and winding road to get to where they are now. And oh, yes, no, stop, you're fired. Thank you. I, that's okay. Um, <laughs> their free dance, it. obviously, is to the long and winding road, long and winding road by Paul McCartney. Yes, it was worth my awful pun. They this these costumes are actually quite beautiful. They're really they're lovely. They carry like a lot of speed into their step sequences. Excellent, excellent twizzles. Very innovative and daring um, lifts that still need a little bit of work. But the quality's there, and they won the free dance and the rhythm dance and the whole competition very deservedly, and by a big margin. Yes, far and away our gold medalists here. They have been truly working so hard on those little things. They did drop some levels here and there, but again, it is very early in the season, and I do think that they just continue to peak, and I think that they will get there at the Olympics. Again, my bold prediction is that they will be on the podium at the Olympics. Mark my words. Mark your words. I mean, they are playing to their strengths and fair enough. Also, I do have to point out really, really quickly in the slow-mo replays, you can see them chatting to each other. And a lot of teams do this, like a lot of pairs and dance teams do this. However, Chelsea Liu and Danny O'Shea, please take note. (laughs) You need to learn the art, like the subtle art of talking in the program. Like keep it subtle. They were like full on talking last week at Skater. Like the full on talk. You need to like learn to like hide it, like choose the opportune moments to chat to each other. Maybe like practice some ventriloquism or something like practice some ventriloquism. It's a very niche market to get Very into. niche market, but learn from Piper and Paul. They keep it subtle and you don't notice them in real time chatting to each other. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the men. Oh, do we have to? I say this every week. Do we have to? It's just... The whole men's event never fails to deliver such chaos from the coaches to the skaters themselves to the cursed ass ice. Gosh, we have nosebleeds. We have a oh my big God. old chin whack on the ice. We have Avril Lavigne showed up for a <laughs> We have like more splat fests. We have a coach getting their accreditation taken away from them not something because totally of... unfounded eh. okay anyway let's let's we'll get to everything but let's start with mr roman sadovsky oh no okay basically like the bottom half of this men's field had such sad boy music <laughs> oh my... everyone with the sad boy music every single one um okay so Poor Roman. Oh my gosh. I But okay, Roman started amazingly. Big old quad sal. Love to see it. For the free skate. His his short program was like okay. It started off well, then like the honeymoon period was a short one and then like ugh. but it was okay. It was okay. Lovely choreo. But this free program, man. Yeah, the free program was really, really not great. The short the short was not great in the second half. The free program was not great, probably throughout. In the second half. Both. <laughs> it started off okay. It did. Uh, and then I, I think it was the loop that was kind of the first disaster. Yeah. Um, and then the quad sal and then the axle. He did not get his axle right in either the short or the free. No. And then he his nose started yeah. bleeding and I was like, Let's cut the stream. Let's, like let's badly. <laughs> like he was, li- you could see the blood splattering all over the ice. Um, and I think like, I don't know when it started, but maybe like it affected the back half of his program as well. Just, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a pretty bad nosebleed, but he's a beautiful skater though. He covers the ice so well, but he really needs to keep his shit together. <laughs> In programs. Like. Yeah, he really does. He was honestly really sad in interviews after, so I, yeah. I just feel bad for him. I feel I enjoy for him. him. He just I needs f- to kind of pull too. it together a little bit. I'll, I'll, li- I'll watch his vlog afterwards. Just for a few minutes each day. That's all we're asking, Roman. Just pull it together for a few minutes. Keep that consistent practice going. Okay. Oh, and this is the same for our next skater. In 11th place is Tomoki Hiwatashi. <laughs> Oh, no. I really need... Okay, I just have to comment that some men can really deal with the non-tucked-in shirt. I don't think Tomoki is one of them. I think it makes him look a little sloppy and, like, disturbs his lines a little bit. 
Um, yeah, I'd agree. And his hair is a little messy, too. And that's not, like, by any means, like, insulting him. But I just think that it just affects, like, his overall appearance a little bit and packaging. Maybe just comb the hair a little bit more. Maybe gel it a little bit and tuck the shirt in to help the lines. I think that could help him. Okay, mom. <laughs> I'm a mom. Can you tell? Um, I'm really, I'm a fan of his programs this season though. Uh, he kept standards by Leslie Odom Jr. for his short. I think that's a great choice. Wait, did he skate to the artist last season as well? Or am I having an aneurysm? Um, regardless, it, they're great vehicles for him, but unfortunately the performances did not come together at all. So for the short program, he had a quad to open, had to put his foot down to stop the over-rotation, but he stood up, a lovely punchy triple axle, and then the quad toe. Called on the quarter, had to turn out, and you could tell he was thinking whether it was worth it to, like, chuck on a single toe or something, but at the end he didn't, and that you could see the look of dejection, like, just coming over his face. Poor guy. Uh, the free skate went a lot better apart from the single axle. <laughs> a lot of men having trouble with their axles here, but really, really good fight. Very good fight. Okay, the first half wasn't terrible, but the second half was markedly better. He he managed to pick it up, um, which is like mental mental fight. We we love short memory um, for athletes. Short memory of the first Short-term half. Short-term memory loss for athletes. Exactly. It's it's beneficial. Brilliant choreo sequence at the end. Great overall program. Just wish he can deliver it cleanly and have a clean competition, short and long. Hopefully at nationals, Tomoki. Please. Please. Yeah, Tomoki has been on the struggle bus for a little bit, um, as have several American men. But I think... Yeah, just tuck in the shirt. That's my that's my chief complaint here. Maybe he can take notes from one Tanaka Keiji-san, who uh, has beautiful costumes. Beautiful costumes. His energy is so good. Okay, both of these costumes from the short and the free. His short program, he skated to uh, the soundtrack from Evangelion, which, if you guys didn't know, is an anime. Um, and a lot of people, again, were complaining about this program. I just feel like complaining about complaining people is basically what I feel like doing this season. But, like, the costume is very uh, reminiscent of the colors that are used in the anime. It's black, and it has kind of, like, this hollow green slash purple shift going on, which is super reminiscent the of the anime vibe. and i adore it it's a little bit tron like evan bates but like tasteful it's like a suave and futuristic hulk cross with joker a suave I love hulk it. i love it a suave a suave <laughs> hulk holographics are here to stay hopefully i love it quad to open landed a little on his side but he managed to keep his hand off the ice nothing too noticeable though um bloody popping popping the axle into a double um, then triple flip double toe. Everyone with the axle yes. struggles. And then triple flip double toe. But you can tell he was so disappointed. But all level four in spins and steps, like that's all we care about, which isn't true. Like we want you to skate clean. And I hate to see him disappointed. Um, but this free skate, <laughs> so much is right. He's having a red... He's having a Red Taylor's vision. Or Taylor... Whoa. He's having a Red Taylor's version moment with these extremely autumnal colored pants like i love it he looks like he's working at an 80s bowling alley but it's like the best vibe of it he's skating to whiplash the soundtrack from the movie and i'm so happy i love i love it so much i did not love um <laughs> the technical performance he didn't love it either um but one day one day we'll see see a clean version of this free skate because our eyes and kg himself deserve it he has fantastic packaging yes he's one of those skaters who you know probably won't be able to compete with all the quad beans out there i mean he does have quads um but just his skating skills and performance experience and ability alone is a reason to watch him he just he just makes any program he does very enjoyable it's always like thematic and we love it. Love it. Love, love it. it. I also appreciate the geometric print on his shirt and the suspenders. Like, chef's kiss. Oh, yeah. We, we love a suspenders. We love suspenders. 
All right, let's move on to our ninth place finisher, and that is 21-year-old Conrad Orzel from Canada, skating to Who Wants to Live Forever by Queen for short, and the Warsaw Concerto uh, for his free skate. What did you think of Conrad and his nude Barbie doll Ken hands? I mean, gloves. <laughs> I didn't notice until uh, you I didn't saw notice? tweet about it, and I was like, oh, and then I noticed. It's the first thing I noticed, and I was like, no, you look, it looks like Evan Bates in his free dance costume. They're puffy, they're noticeable, and like they're just not right. Uh, I do think that he looks like an animatronic. <laughs> <laughs> he just has, I think it's a combination of the great posture, by the way. He has fantastic posture. Maybe. Pilates I want his posture, that's true. Have a field day with his posture. Yeah. Um, however, his shirt is straight from Nathan's wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Is he sponsored oh, wow. by Nike as well? Who knows? But it, again, all of this just adds to that. It's, to, it's Toyota. Energy. It's not Nike. It's Toyota, Toyota giving him the shirts, which also lends to the animatronic energy. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. I love Disneyland, so I, I I enjoy good animatronic. He's got a lot of potential. I think like the jumps can be cleaned up. Um, a really nice triple axle with, you know, it's big and covers a lot of the ice. Um. Like, but also you're skating to, you're skating a queen and it's an all black costume with some gray panels. Is that like the best you could do for queen? I don't think Freddie Mercury would be satisfied. No, Freddie would not be happy. But again, he just took a visit to Nathan's wardrobe. Yeah. Conrad, also, not Freddie. Yeah. Also like Brian Orser is his coach. Like my brain cells did not make that connection. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. There, there was Brian. Love um, you, Brian. In the free skate, again with the gloves. <laughs> Animatronic mannequin. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe there's a reason for it. Um, But just kind of like some sad boy music again. Sad boy hours. Started off well, though. A huge and confident quad toe, triple toe. Like, quad toe is, he's got it down pat. Um, But it just filled, riddled with errors. Riddled with errors, especially in the in the back half of the program. Yes. I, I hope that he can get it together um i don't think that he is in contention for one of those olympic spots i do think that there are men that have been performing better than he is however maybe next quad he will be up and coming i I do think that he is again a ton of potential the posture is just impeccable another skater whose whole competition really was riddled with errors is none other than our eighth place finisher alexander samarin wait you must mean avril lavigne matrix boy (laughs) Avril Lavigne, sorry, <laughs> skating to the Matrix. The reason why I'm saying that is because he was wearing basically like very cheap <laughs> Kari Sakamoto costume. Um, but his he had a, like this green loose, loosely tied tie, thin tie, which was very Avril Lavigne circa 2005. <laughs> yes, the pleather Matrix shirt for Sasha Samarin. Like, is it an upgrade from the Ed Hardy shirts? Who knows? No, it's definitely not. That is a solid no. All he needed was a pleated, short, pinstriped skirt to, to complete the Avril Lavigne. Maybe Kari can lend Sasha, like, her costume. I mean, it's better anyway. But also, what was with this Matrix remix? I feel like he's like... Yeah, I don't I don't know. He just... He needs some dubstep in his life, I guess. Um, bless Ted Barton. He, he was saying about Summer and... Not a huge performer and (laughs) has the technical elements, just didn't deliver them. And I was like, this can summarize um, Sasha's career. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Um, Okay. Pretty much half of his protocol sheet was negative GREs, (laughs) just saying. And then this next costume also just very much cobbled together. It looks like... um, Back in, like, 2010, when you would watch the YouTube videos about, like, how to DIY your own cut shirt, and everyone would just, like, cut these slits in the back of their thrifted men's graphic tees, this is what this costume looked like. Stop calling me out. (laughs) Stop calling my tween self out. Um, He's skating to Lord and Master by Apache. There's literally something wrong with this. And program. Save Us by Armand Amar, which, like, we love. Which, facts, please save us. Lord and Master Save Us is what I felt about his costume. 
And through the whole, okay, for the opening quad Lutz triple toe. Wow. Like, wow. Which is truly, it is, it's, it's huge. It's exactly what you want to see. But then from there on, I was like, I was bouncing between the club and the elevator in terms of the music. Like it's suddenly <laughs> the club and the elevator. Just going between the club <laughs> levels, right? Hopping in the elevator, then going up. Oh, what's this floor? It's like, yeah, he was taking us through all the different levels of a club. Um, we were starting off with, you know, your regular stuff. Then we were we got to like this ASMR spoken word level where everyone is like so high that they're checked out, but like still swaying with the rhythm of the voice type deal. And then we went to this like video game opera floor. And what really got me though is at the end, the audience was so hesitant in clapping. <laughs> they were like, uh, you're finished. Like, do we clap? And it was the most awkward, like kind of like a. <laughs> and I lost it. Like, <laughs> I mean, I feel the exact oh same way. If there was ever a program to slow clap for this would be it slow, slow awkwardly awkward clap. clap like do i clap? i thought we'd reached peak slow awkward clap with the avril lavigne tie in the matrix but apparently he had something else coming no. for us in the free we, we had a lot more um music remixes and things Jesus to come Christ. all right do you know who didn't have like a really awful costume and that's yamamoto oh Soka. my gosh Okay, he seems to have aged like five years in the last year. God knows what has happened to I this know. man. But very angled face. Yeah, this is like model model shit going on here. I know he's only twenty one, but he looks like like in the best way possible. He looks like in his early thirties. Like everyone was thirsting over him on Reddit. He has very good costumes. Yes. So I I really enjoyed the draping of his uh, beige Me slash too. cream top in the free. Skate. I loved it too. Um, Let's start with the short program, though. To Yesterday by John Lennon and Paul McCartney, performed by Michael Bolton. Again, sad boy hours. Sad boy hours. Also, the fr- that freescape, very sad boy music. Um, very solid quad toe to open. Then pops into a double axle. Soda. Um, huge coverage across the ice on the triple flip, triple toe combo. Although, came a little stuck on the landing of the toe. But it was okay. Then this free program... Lovely, lovely top, but the popping and the falling. And then the jumps just kind of didn't go very well. The opening toe was popped to a double. Um, and then the quad toe, big mistake on the quad toe. And then the next two jumps, <laughs> j- jumping passes, uh, the three jump pass, the axle's called on the quarter, and then some mistakes there. And then again, with a single triple axle, again, called on the quarter and some mistakes there as well. But lovely choreo sequence with like gorgeous spread eagles and a lovely inner bower and an awesome final combo spin. Level four, obviously. Yeah, it really actually got it together for the second half. Um, the jumping passes in the second half were actually quite great. Low GOEs, though, between zero and two for all three of those last jumping passes, but really, really pulled it together. I'm really looking forward to him becoming a mainstay in the Japanese men's scene for the next quad because he's got so much quality that we haven't yet seen, like the like his cap- cap- full capability. Sorry, guys, for that awful awfully constructed sentence it's really early in the morning for me oh hi 3 42 a.m but things we do um, for this pod. things we do for you guys um hi like to our five listeners um i don't know why but like out slow opera ballads just don't work for me for free skates they no, kind of just they make don't. me switch off it's not hype it's not hype no our sixth place skater marisa kvitalashvili kind of had like hype moments here and there like Hype meaning a Terry slapping him in the kiss and cry for a short program saying like, mask, mask. <laughs> that was the hype moment. She was literally slapping him on the hand. I was like, oh my gosh, this Bless. is so funny and so typical a Terry and Maurice. Um, however, not a great short program. I think all the Terry girls scored higher than he did in that short program. <laughs> I don't even think that's an exaggeration. Ted Barton didn't even try to pronounce Mar- Kvitalashvili. He just stuck with Maurice. And I was just like, fair enough, Ted, fair enough. Um, costume, not my favorite. Um, yikes. Very Ed Hardy. Very Ed Hardy. Yikes on that full blade assist and that skid on the quad toe, double toe. Guys, 
go to um, a Twitter profile of Elisa. So she's at um, Lunarius. So L-U-N-N-A-R-I-A-S. She has a physics degree and recently did a thread on the physics of full blade assists. I highly recommend it. Jeez, couldn't be me. It is just... I will never have a physics degree. I cried a lot in physics. <laughs> but it's just... He is... Maurice is just the typical... That full blade assist is scary, man. It's it's gnarly. Like so many people think that Quanto is a quad sow, and like for good reason. Anyway, like m- he also did a one handed car wheel at a cartwheel at the end of his step <laughs> sequence, and I was just like, he definitely learned this from the girls. They're probably like fooling around with the genie. Oh, for sure. Uh, program for sure. <laughs> also, his all of his spins and steps were level four though, and I feel like that's his only saving grace with a Terry. Like, but he did m- so much better. In the free skate. Frank Sinatra medley, big fan. He's in a cranberry vest. However, he, in his red vest, white shirt, and black pants, definitely looks like he's a bellhop <laughs> at the Marriott down the street. It would fit the profile, <laughs> though. It's in theme. It's just <laughs> not great. Not a, not a good costume. He's skating so slow. Maurice, the girls are probably <laughs> skating <laughs> faster than you knew. <laughs> Um, however, I think it's a much better um, yes. program than in the, the short program. He actually had the lead on the free skate for quite a while here. He, he did. Didn't get um, a single GOE higher than plus three, though. A lot of plus ones and twos with a few, like, plus zeros dotted in. But it was much I mean, better than the short. it is quite shore. floppy here oh, and there. yeah. There's also, like, this fade out of the music to, like, a silence pause as a transition, I was like, very <laughs> really weird. Daniil, Daniil Glackenkaus. But it was much better than the short, and at least it seemed like the energy picked up um, the more into the program he got. So well done. He definitely leapfrogged a lot of people. And then we're going to get to fifth place finisher, Keegan Messing. I'm upset about this. Big sad. I'm upset, but also obsessed with the fact that in both the short and the free skate, Kiss and Cry, he got his phone out and showed a photo of Lane and his new Bubba Wyatt. Oh, it was literally the sweet man. It was so heartwarming. Love him. Sweet man. Short program to never tear us apart. Performed by In Excess and Joe Cocker. Also, I don't know how I feel about this never tear me apart cover. <laughs> never tear us apart cover. You know what? I'm I love In Excess. Um, love ne- never tear us apart. The cover, not sure. Questionable. Yeah. But the red mesh X on the side of his costume is dope. Great call to in excess. Love it. Um, short program was great. Really, really great. Quad toe, triple toe to open. That was beautiful. Great choreo for the beat drop moment. If you know what I mean. The do 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 doom 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 doom. Big fan. Um, whippy triple axle has to hold onto the landing, but. Oof, that Russian split into the triple Lutz was a chef's kiss. Oh, so good. Okay, I almost lost my mind in the spread eagle switch slide. Skating skills 101, ladies and gentlemen. Skating skills 101. I screamed, literally. Lost my mind. Apparently, a large Balde texted Ted Barton um, three flame emojis. I was like, yes, completely. Um, scored 93.28. But then his PCS was a whole ass three points off Jason and Nathan. I mean, he w- he did drop levels in the change foot sit spin and the step sequence, but like, come on. PCS. Seriously? Anyway. But this free program, man, oh I gosh, was devastated. So and great. I was severely concerned. I, I don't even know where to start here. Um, maybe we can just talk about the fall right off the bat. So basically he was going into this loop. And he... Tr- just a triple loop. Yes. And he basically just kind of like fell on his face, but chin first. And I was like, that's a concussion. Yeah. And he was holding his chin like it. The ice is hard, guys. The ice is hard. And it's if any of you have been like decked in the chin before, just by like someone decking you in the chin. Sorry, it's Muay Thai, not because I got in a fight or something. Your brain rattles around in your skull. It's not a nice place to be hit or have impact on it's really direct yeah it's concussion central concussion central if it's a really hard one and like even if he even if he fell on his like lip rather than his chin like teeth through lip also very very bad and as soon as that happened i was like he needs to stop jumping and then okay but then after that happened, the next two jumping passes were so bad. I literally thought he was, like, straight up, like, very injured. Because he 
fell on the Lutz and then he just kind of like sat down and then the axle became a single axle and I was like we need to stop the count folks and not in a good way like we just need to kind of take a break here yeah that Lutz was interesting like he lands really low and he's got great knees so we know he can take it but then he just slips off the hill which is disappointing then that from the ax the popped axle then hanging on to dear life that triple flip triple toe I was like I'm legit can I texted you I was like I want him to stop jumping. It left him looking really dazed and wobbly on his feet, just in this skate. Good. I thought I thought so too. And even if it wasn't a concussion, like I thought he he was concussed, winded slash dazed and wobbly on his feet, which is enough of a reason to stop jumping. Like, even like if that chin hit was like a smash on his lip, or smashing his lip into his teeth, or just bringing banging his teeth up somewhere it's going to cause the brain to rattle around in the skull and either way it would have it would definitely cause anyone to lose concentration because it's not a typical skating mistake or a fall and you know i for one would definitely just be thinking about that because it's not something you brush off going like oh yeah i just fell again and it was a bad fall like i fell on my hip or something like it's not a typical skating issue you could tell like he held, he was holding his chin, checking his chin. And then at the end of his program, he was like wiping his mouth, checking if there was any blood. Like, come on. And then, okay. So he came off the ice and he was talking to his coach and he was either saying that it was a boot issue. I think he said the word boot several times as he came off the ice. So yeah. I don't know if there was something going on there, but like. There probably was. And then that, co- that you know, contributed to the fall. But still, like I'm. Get him to an hos- a hospital, please. Or at least, like, get him to be medically checked. Like, All right, well. Anyway, let's move on to our fourth place finisher, um, the sex symbol of Russian men's skating, apparently. And that's... A very broody man. Very broody 21-year-old. Um, and that's Makar Ignatov. The broodiest of broody. I would have had a humongous crush on him in high school. I did love a broody boy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm not going to lie, me too. Um, Iron Sky for his short program. Sponsored by Ed Hardy. He was he starts off so close, but Makar and Ed Hardy have long standing relationship. Him and his Ed Hardy shirts. Why does he have to be so up and up in the judges? faces he's like here's my face patrick chan loved it he was like it's a great way to start with the program a little intimidation uh he also looks like an animatronic (laughs) i think at this point in the season like at the start of the season he always looks very stiffer than usual but like also like gets really gassed really easily and that probably adds to the animatronic vibe but you know great quad loop yes great quad loop great quad toe triple toe fantastic couldn't complain but then what happens is that there's some like weird spoken word part and all I could think of was in the opening part of Mary Poppins where everyone is covering their ears <laughs> to, to wait for the cannonball to sound because the suffragettes are asking for votes. <laughs> It's like this, like, muffly sounding spoken word shit and I'm like, I just can't climb on board this train. <laughs> the shirt's so bad, though. It reminds me of, like, a an album cover that I can't put my finger on, but I, I'm not like Nickelback. Surprised. Finger 11, circa wow. 2008. <laughs> I mean, who knows? But then the costume kind of weirdness carries on to his free program to Piano Concerto Number no. 1 by Tchaikovsky. But if you didn't know what he was... I dad ass thought it was a Swan Lake program. I thought it was a Swan Lake one too. And I was like, this is Piano Concerto Number no. 1, not Swan Lake. I know Ch- Tchaikovsky composed it. But also throwback to my free skate music from 2008 because I skated to this exact music. Not finger like, eleven, no, not <laughs> yeah, not finger eleven, unfortunately. But I did skate to this. I did not. I wore royal blue. I did not wear a Swan Lake esque costume. So anyway, lovely reminiscence. You know, still remember the choreo. But anyway, Macar misses the quad loop for like the first time ever that I've seen from him. That's weird for him. And it was under, and he, I think he himself was surprised, going like, "I don't have any issues on it." So. That was weird, but beautiful. It was the curse. Curse. Beginning of the curse, really. Beautiful quad sal, though. Beautiful quad toe. Good quad toe, double toe. But you can tell that he definitely became a lot more cautious and conservative in his jumps after that opening mistake on the quad loop. And given how everyone else skated thus far, I can't really blame him, you know. But at the end of the program, you could tell he was gassing out. He was doing, like, triple flip, double toe, triple loop, oiler, double sow. Um... He's he's gassed out. Um, <laughs> Poor guy. He really needs some more conditioning and a new shirt. If you saw him at Russian Test Gates last season, like 
th- that boy at the start of the season just does not have any conditioning whatsoever. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. No, um, none. But he managed to come in fourth overall. That free skate definitely helped him. And somebody who also had a decent free skate to help him, especially when everyone else didn't do so great, is our bronze medalist, Evgeny Simonenko, who is studying medicine at the same time at uni. Sad boy hours again. Skating to what is it about her for a short program? What is it about her? The age-old question. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> probably wrote that in his uh, journal, his art journaling that he does with this broody <laughs> attitude. Um also should not play into heteronormativity i apologize for that (laughs) but also evgeny with his um his hellfire music for his free skate hellfire music master margarita i actually you know what i'm I'm on board with this soundtrack but the pieces oh i do like it it's just very i I just can't imagine him coming again from his surgery rotation or maybe like his dermatology rotation and then just popping on this hellfire music (laughs) I mean, Master Margarita literally is like devils coming up. Like, <laughs> but okay, you know what? I was disappointed. I think it was at Russian Test Gates. In his costume, he has like this little flap. That sounds so weird. But when the music changes, the flap um, goes to the other side of the chest and it's like a really smart, subtle costume change that goes with the character. Like if you want to keep it fun, do it that way. But he didn't do it here. He didn't do it here. And I was like kind of disappointed. He was too far in the depths of hell. <laughs> He was really, he was really in the Halloween mood. Like his short, his short program costume is like very stripy and bedazzled, like nicely and like cleanly bedazzled, but it's very Jack Skellington. And I love Jack Skellington. I try to love Jack Skellington. Yeah. Little Sandy Claus action. But you know what? He skated, you know, good enough that he, he leapfrogged into third place. It wasn't the best performance from him, um, especially jump wise. Uh, no falls, but we don't need super clean for men's free skates or short programs. No, not yeah. in men. This is when folks started to finally overtake Maurice. Yes. He was really yeah. very much in the lead for a long time with the free skate. Yeah. But like Makar, Evgeny was gassed at the end. So oh, bless him. Guy. Somebody who has much better conditioning, but not as great as a free skate, is our silver medalist, Jason Brown. Um, however, Sinner Man, as good as I've ever seen it. I cry every time. It needs to be in a museum. I'll never get tired of this program. Everyone needs to give him tens, and like basically no one gave him tens. Absolute fuck oh, us. Okay, so Judge Six is the only judge who gave Jason tens in PCS. for com- The only one that deserves right. Yeah, for composition and judge interpretation six. of music correct judge five be out there dishing 8.75s for jason but then 9.75s for nathan oh no are you kidding (laughs) that's not a good luck judge five and how did jason average 9.18 in skating skills and nathan averaged 9.39 that will forever baffle me Oh, no. I know. And especially Nathan with these programs this season. I'm not really a fan of these programs. But also, like, Jason with his programs versus Nathan with his programs. Like, come on. Like, what are we? What are we doing here? Like, with Cinnamon, are you... Are you kidding me? If this was Ice Dance, there'd be tens galore. Anyway, Cinnamon, perfect. All tens from us. No complaints. Uh, However, Schindler's List, really kind of a struggle here, especially at the beginning. This was definitely the cursed ice coming i was very proud of jason though for standing up on his quad sour attempt yes it was under it was downgraded yes it was double footed but he attempted it stood up and he does get tight when it comes into competition everyone knows that in practice he pulls them out and i can understand it confidence definitely a big issue but the more and more he gets out and um competes it the better for him um unfortunately he followed up with a fall on the triple axle Recovered well with a triple axle double toe, but then, look, regardless of how he skates technically, his skating just puts everyone in a hypnotic state. You just, you can't take your eyes away for any reason. You're just drawn in going like, he might be skating badly, but like, this is amazing. Or like, why can't I take my eyes off you? And it comes down to him as a skater and the program and the choreography. But then... The ice is truly cursed because Jason Brown bobbled slash slipped in the final spin and then tripped a little getting to center ice to bow. Yeah, it was it was really fucking weird. <laughs> but he managed to hold on to second place. So that is 
that is very good for him. I'm very happy, very proud. Obviously, would love to see a gorgeous, clean Schindler's list. Hopefully at Nationals, because that will be a big moment. Waiting for it. Yes, I agree. Okay, let's talk about Nathan. Oh, God, I was really, I was literally, like, shaking, which is probably not healthy to be so nervous about someone who is not myself. Not that I don't shake when I'm nervous about myself, because I also do that in spades, but... <laughs> It's not about my, not a podcast about my anxiety. It is a podcast about you, though. It's our podcast. But that also means to an extension, it's about your love for Nathan. And all eyes were on Nathan as people were just talking and talking and talking about how he'll rebound after his performance at Skate America. And boy, he has not had an easy week. No, he has There was hasn't. a lot going on. Um Okay, let's start with the short program and kind of go through things chronologically. Okay. So short program to Eternity by Benjamin Clementine with a bit of Nemesis at the end. For some reason, I'm more okay with this music switch into Nemesis better than last week. I don't know. Maybe it was because of the performance or maybe I knew what I was expecting. But yeah, I think you could also see he was quite tight and pressured, put a lot of pressure on himself for the jumps for obvious reasons. Yeah, especially the first two jumping yeah, passes. but... I'm very glad for him that he managed to skate clean, albeit not his best, but that's so okay. We can all collectively take a sigh of relief with and for Nathan. I always just get really scared when I hear Nemesis. It's just kind of like a <laughs> condi classical conditioning, as Pavlov would say. I just don't know if I feel this program. and I don't feel eternity. I, I think that's the issue is that like the first third, especially, I'm like, what are we doing here, folks? <laughs> I also think that before he goes into the nemesis step sequence, he has this moment where he like squishes his neck into his body like a turtle. And he, he did that the first time too. But it really just reminds me of that one scene in Charlie Brown Christmas where everyone is dancing. And this one kid is just like dancing with like his turtleneck, just kind of like squishing his neck into his body. And that just what it reminds me of every single time. <laughs> Someone knows what I'm talking about out there. I can show you. Oh, gosh. Um, but yeah, Eternities, it doesn't, yeah, it's not my favorite. It doesn't do it for no. me. I, I don't, know. you know how much I love Nemesis. And yes, it brings like back bad Olympic memories. But I like, I kind of like the story that he's going for redemption. So I don't mind it. Um, just Eternities, probably not. It wouldn't be my choice. I'd choose. No. No. I'll, I'll, my, my choice would be Benjamin, Rocket Man. So <laughs> what do I know? Really? <laughs> what do I know? Who, who would have guessed? <laughs> who would have guessed? But Benjamin Clementine has other great songs, so... No, just rock it now. It's not even by Benjamin Just rock Clementine. <laughs> John. But now it is by Benjamin Clementine. <laughs> IP rights are handed over. Um, free Skate to a selection of music by Mozart, which is the most Nathan submission of, like... Really just lack of What he though. skates to. That's all it is. In, instead of, like, I am, as in, like, Ice Academy of Montreal, like, giving literally all of the five <laughs> songs, song or, like, ten around. million songs that are used... Nathan's just like selection of music by Mozart. <laughs> okay, that opening quad sound literally like lost my shit. I lost my lunch. Like, oh, no. I almost. He was so tilted in the air, Ooh, but he landed it, and I Thank was goodness. like, I need to go change my pants. Um, not actually, but like you know, Nathan what I mean. could use um, a change of pants because he's been wearing the same black pants for truth. years. Isn't that the truth? I am glad that he. Uh, skated with less difficult content i think he needs the confidence back and he knows he needed to secure a win here to get that grand prix final spot so much better overall delivery than skate america still a lot to work on with this program though i feel it feels a little underwhelming based on what we know he can deliver oh especially like when philip glass was so good and then like these so two good. programs together i just don't know for olympic year like also, did anyone else feel like that Nathan could do more choreo in that Lacrimosa step sequence? He only got a level three as well. I mean, Nathan could yeah, that's always true. do a little more I just more felt a little empty. Than and then I literally just saw a side-by-side um, a -side comparison video of Anna Shabakova's uh, free skate um, this season, which also has a step sequence to Lacrimosa. And for some reason, the choreography is like remarkably similar. And I was like, oh, are we getting like a pair of... Anna Shevakova and Nathan Chen. I wouldn't mind it, but like, it's a bit weird. Maybe someone will land side by side maybe, jumps. Maybe. With them, they can do side by side quad lutzes. Imagine. But also, like, I love how 
Anna has more choreography than Nathan. Does there need to be so much funeral music at the Olympics? At the end, it went into this dubstep remix and I was like, Mozart is rolling in his grave, but in the best way because Mozart's vibing to this dubstep remix. Maybe he's the one who did the remix. He would. Mozart would totally vibe Happy to Happy Halloween, remix. ladies and gents. Mozart in his grave, just Happy <laughs> doofing it out. Well, he's DJing. In summary, very glad that Nathan toned it down a little bit. Um, still not, I feel like he's still not very sure-footed with his jumps, but I am glad that he won the gold medal here, not at anyone else's expense, because there were some really terrible things going on here. Let's quickly, let's quickly talk about this whole ref situation before we wrap everything up. Oh, yeah. So. Let's do that. Apparently before the free skate, Raphael quote-unquote broke protocol in terms of the tight COVID bubble, and... So he lost his accreditation and Nathan was left without a coach by the boards and in the kiss and cry for the free skate, which is like, we know that they can, um, they've got a strong enough working relationship that Nathan can go and compete without Raph. But still, the story is just, do you want to go into the story? Because it's just absolutely ridiculous, in my opinion. Yeah, the story is so weird. So basically, Raph was going to the audience uh, to watch Diana and Gleb. However, he went into an area that was restricted. And But according to all the reports and everything that I've read, there was no signs up to say that this area was for these particular folks or that it was restricted. So basically, they told him that he broke the COVID bubble and that he they need to take his accreditation away for Skate Canada. And I was like, that is so ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like for all the other COVID shit that <laughs> ISU is letting skate by, skate by. Wow, what a pun! But like, and this is the thing that they try and kick him out for. Like, I just don't understand. Anyway, I mean, Nathan was good about it. He was like, "It's okay, Ralph. Like, you can go home if you want to." But like, I understand the situation. Ralph's like, "No, I'm staying. Um, you know, I'm going to be here for you." And with that said, I believe we can end this podcast. <laughs> I know. What what a ride. And we're doing this next week as well. Oh, I'm Jesus prepared Christ. for more chaos. Although the field does look a little bit different next week. So I'm a little yes. excited for some fresh, fresh faces. And we're going to Italy this time, not China. So that'll yeah. be um that'll, that'll be a be nice change. All right, let's let's wrap it up. Again with no book kiss and cry section because we we don't have our shit together. But I know I'm sorry you guys. I'm it's such a big part you're missing out on, but so I'm Claudia and come chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That is L-U-T-Z Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at letsgetdownpod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and would love to purchase a beak mask from Zach Laca, please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.